everyone, it's Eric from Flywheel Studio. Over the weekend, I had my first chance to dive into Dreamflow by Flutterflow. I wanted to see kind of what does it look like to go from zero to mobile application and some of the pros and cons of Dreamflow compared to Flutterflow and kind of how to best use it. I have some ideas here, but it's still preliminary. So I thought I'd make this video to walk through what I was able to do in a single day. Some of the cool things that I was able to achieve, some of the things I don't really understand, as well as how I'd use the application differently going forward or the next time I used it. First, let's talk very briefly about what Dreamflow is and kind of what it isn't if you aren't familiar with the product. So Flutterflow has a visual interface for development. That means it's drag and drop. You are able to drag in components like a widget or text or a button or a row. And then dynamically, you can link that to your data or visually you can link that to your data. You can also build actions and action uh, trees or chains visually in the front end and you can easily connect that to the back end and it has one click deployment that makes flutterflow a dream for people like designers or non-technical developers typically you do need to have some development understanding i think uh in no code low code visual development people who don't understand any development principles it's very difficult to build a high quality application because you still need to understand kind of the framework that the application exists in. Flutterflow means that you don't need to write code, but you still need to kind of understand the structure of how an application works, especially across front end, back end, and data architecture. The same is very much true in Dreamflow, but how you approach that is fundamentally different. So in Dreamflow, you have three sections, okay? And they call this, uh, the three panel development. So the first one is you have this visual preview mode where you can see your widget tree. Um, you are able to add um, components within here, okay? They have a whole host of uh, framework widgets. You can see it's really quite extensive. This is a little different than the way Flutterflow works. Flutterflow does this more from a visual development standpoint where you can see a lot of this is maybe a bit more technical. So for instance, I don't know what a interactive viewer is versus an orientation builder. I don't know what these are. I'm not a Flutter developer uh, and I'm not a developer by trade. So I think that if you were trying to use this uh, within this framework, you would need to have more development skill. They also have project widgets, okay, which uh, I'll go through my project here in a second. And then you have some dependency widgets, okay? You have an inspect mode, which allows you to inspect specific elements here. And then you can go in and visually change these elements. So you do have that visual design component that makes Flutterflow so amazing. So if I wanted to um, change the size of this text or the style, I could do that as well as the color. I can go in and change that for almost anything here. Um, although some of this is dynamic data, okay? So you would wanna be careful about that. Flutterflow, or sorry, Dreamflow also has the code, okay? So, and let me see how to get rid of some of this. You are building directly on top of your code base, okay? This is Flutter code in its purest form. It is uh, everything you see in the visual development portion of this is a representation of that Flutter code. You can do a split view so you can see the code here. And in theory, you could go into this and you could edit a screen in the code and you would see the changes directly here. Lastly, you have the third panel, which is the agent, okay? I'm mostly gonna be talking about the agent today because this is what I used in my development. The agent has the ability to ask, plan, search, build, 
Uh, you can attach images. It can also use links. I'll talk about that here because I gave it kind of a challenge to see how far it could go. And I was pr very pleasantly surprised with what it can do. So let's talk about the project. I'm gonna scroll all the way up here. Um, I don't have my initial prompt that I built the project with, but it is based on Open Food Facts, okay? So Open Food Facts is a free and open database of food products around the world. And I said, okay, let's see if we can build a, an application that allows people to scan products and see the results in, the app, in, their, um, in their device. So I gave Dreamflow a prompt. Uh, it didn't have anything to do with open facts, okay? I just gave it a prompt with a few of the things I wanted the application to be capable of, and it produced this UI, as well as, and part of this has changed since I've updated uh, and worked through the project, it created this details page for each product, okay? What's really interesting about Dreamflow is in your code base, you have an architecture marked down, which is the .md file, okay? And this is kind of like how your application is supposed to work. This is the context for the AI assistant, okay? And so for my original prompt, what it did is it created this architecture of what I wanted, and then it developed an application based on that. From my first prompt, I had a working application. It did. It wasn't connected to a database. There wasn't um, any data per se. It filled in some temporary data as part of this, but it did have all of this UI and it looked great, especially for the context it was given. And I had a, a simple two page application, okay? Where I have a list of products and I, uh, and I had a details page for each of those products, which I was pleasantly surprised. It did a very nice job with it. I would say the UI looks good. It's simple. Um, that's one of the things I asked it to do. Uh, it's not very complex. I don't think it's anything earth shattering, but it is, it's not bad UI by any means as well. From there, I asked it to build in an API with uh, the open food facts API. Okay. And so it went through this process and it read all the files. You can see it's working here. Okay. Which is nice. Um, you can see it added some action items for itself. It went through this process of adding these. It went in and it wrote um, the API file. Okay. With in Dart here. added some permissions so that it could scan uh, for the barcode scanner so that you would have access to the camera. Uh, it was very intuitive. And again, this is a pretty simple thing. I, I just said, let's integrate this into API and I pasted three links. I didn't tell it what to do with any of the links and it went in and did that. Here you can see what has been added. Okay. And what I did is I asked it, I noticed the search is not working very well. I actually believe that is because that is an open food facts issue. Long story short, they're trying to change how they do search, but the version, the API version I provided does not have full text search. So that continues to be a problem in my application. But I don't think that that comes back to Dreamflow. So I did ask it to change that. It made some changes. And then I tried to deploy to the App Store. So just like, and I'm not going to share uh, my iOS settings because there's some personal information in there. But um, from, from there, I was able to do a one-click deployment to iOS. Okay. I will show Android because there's nothing here. You'd go through, um, put in the information. You'll notice there's no guides here uh, directly. Maybe here there is. I didn't actually use this because I'm familiar with the process, um, but you could find all this information and how to get this information in Flutterflow in their documentation if you had questions about any of this, and then you click to deploy. 
Um, I did get some errors. I basically screenshotted the errors and sent it back. Um, I had to do this twice. So let's see, here's another one. I just had fixed these errors. It completed that process. And I have an app in test flight, okay? Um, which was great. It was amazing. Um, in total, I spent probably 30 minutes to an hour, maybe less. Uh, a lot of it was kind of just waiting for things to run, uh, building this application. Pretty amazing. Now, a few things. First, one of my next uh, experiments that I'm going to be trying here is using actual Figma designs and a more detailed product spec. This is this would be one of the most simplest applications Flywheel would see. It's certainly not very complex. There's no authentication, different user rules. Um, we we don't really know how the assistant or agent will will work through those. We have plenty of documentation on complex apps and also very very detailed Figma designs. There's going to be a whole learning curve of how do you take that detailed documentation, those complex Figma designs, including different states for components, animations, and all that. How do you give that to this agent in a meaningful way? We're still working through that. But one of the things I can say from my experience working in Cursor is using the files and the file structure is an amazing way to make a ton of progress. So if I were going to do this again, I would probably spend a lot more time making sure that this architecture, to be honest, I never read the full architecture uh, while I was building this. I was just seeing where, where I could get and how it would work. But I would spend a lot more time focusing on this. And then I would reference this file when working with the agent. Or I would ask the agent to plan out step-by-step -step instructions for specific features and I would have it implement those features here. You can put in an image here, so I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to take uh, Figma screenshots and put them in here. But again, you'll need to tie those screenshots to your technical requirements. So you might end up with like a Figma underscore architecture document that has a list of screenshot names and the functionality associated with each of them. And then through the agent, you could work between that, fi that file and an attached Figma screenshot. That's kind of where I think this is going. Overall, very impressive. Um, even if we were doing a simple application like this in Flutterflow, I think it would take a day. I think it might take um, you know a, a little bit longer than what it took us, uh, it took me here. Now, Again, it remains to be seen for more detailed applications, what the time saving is and the number of errors in the product as it gets more complex. Of course, um, you know, it's easier to have bugs and errors in the system. But overall, right now, super impressive and nice job to the Flutterflow team.